Let's talk about blockchain interoperability and more specifically about the LISC interoperability solution. Today we have published a high level overview of our solution which comes after um, a blog post which we released recently which covered essentially just a general introduction to blockchain interoperability as a topic um, where we detailed several uh, industry solutions available on the market already. Mm. But today's blog post uh, essentially gives a very good overview of our solution already. However, this is just scratching the surface at ListJS 2021, which will happen on the 21st and 22nd of May. Um, we will give so much more information. So I'm really excited for the event. But today I just want to give you a quick overview of this blog post and explain some aspects with it um, in my own language. Um, but it will be very brief only. I definitely suggest you to read the blog post yourself. So essentially, when we are talking about interoperability, we are talking about the transfer of tokens or data from one chain to another chain. Um, in our case, the LISC blockchain is always uh, called the main chain, while blockchains built with the LISC SDK, we're calling them side chains. Mm. And our interoperability solution is based on the paradigm of cross-chain certification, um, which you can also uh, find being mentioned in our first blog post. And essentially, um, you could see it like that. So you now want to transfer LSK token from the main chain to the side chain. Um, and that's something we call a cross-chain message. Um, like very generic um, it can be the token but it can also be a data like like any data like I said before but let's say you want to send a token like the LSK token from the main chain to a side chain so you're sending these cross-chain messages you do it other people do it and they're being collected essentially on the main chain but not posted on the or uploaded onto the chain added to the database yet they are still in memory um, and then at one point someone, in order to get these um, cross-chain messages confirmed on the network and included in the block, someone will have to post something called a cross-chain update transaction, which essentially then gathers all the cross-chain messages or cross-chain message transactions and include them in a block. Um, the same thing happens if you want to send a transaction from a sidechain to the main chain or from a sidechain to other sidechains, um, where all these cross-chain messages uh, are being collected first in memory and then only when someone is posting this cross-chain update transaction, um, they're being included into the blockchain and added to the database so that the actual transfer of token or data can happen. And um, yeah, in our case, um, we have um, like the main chain um, being in the, in the middle, acting like a central piece of our ecosystem. Um, so everything you're sending like from sidechain to sidechain is being routed through the main chain. Um, this is obviously the case when you're sending something from or to the main chain. Um, but it's also the case with sidechain to sidechain transactions. Mm. We're doing this in order to uh, manifest the list blockchain as, let's say, the centerpiece of our ecosystem on which blockchain applications can be registered at um, for us to keep an overview, um, for example, in the user interfaces, which applications are available, but also for the entire platform to just know which ones are, are available um, on the network so that they can essentially find them even and are aware of them. Um, and further, we decided to do that because we want to establish the LSK token as the standard token for paying fees on the list main chain or any other side chain. So by default, this will be the case. <clears throat> so we're doing that in order to really 
give the LSK token a lot of utility and a lot of value um, within our ecosystem uh, and creating demand for it because well there needs to be a thriving um, like token economics model behind the LSK token uh, in order to create somewhat of a network effect where people um, ho like hold or own the token and can then jump essentially on any blockchain application on the list platform and are ready to use their utility aspects without the need to purchase first another token. Um, however, um, being open source, being modular and being a very flexible SDK, um, it of course allows any developer to also um, like make a new token on it and use that new token um, as like the feed token on the sidechain. Um, also, um, the main chain routing is not enforced. We cannot do that. Um, sidechain routing is also possible. Uh, however, by default, the LSK token is like the default fee token and main chain routing is in place. Um, to create that, well, idea of a platform and, a, and an ecosystem and um, to have a much, much better user experience. So these are definitely the recommended ways um, for developers um, to build their blockchain applications. With the blog post, we are also announcing new roadmap objectives. Um, it's eight in total. Um, quickly an overview. The first one is to define cross-chain messaging protocol, which effectively mm, includes everything I was talking about in terms of these cross-chain messages and these cross-chain update transactions. Um, the second one is the definition of the sidechain registration and its life cycle. So like I said before, we require every sidechain, every blockchain application to be registered on the main chain um, so that the platform is aware that it exists. And um, at one point, maybe a sidechain has decided to stop operating, to shut down, to uh, be terminated, or um, it had a bug um, in the code which uh, caused it to, to stop working properly um, at which point like somewhat of a token recovery mechanism for LSK would kick in so that users can get back their LSK token which are stuck then on the sidechain. So this is all uh, encapsulated with this objective. The third one being to define a state model and state route where we are um, like introducing um, a state route that allows us to authenticate the whole state of a chain with a single hash. Um, that's very necessary as we are handling then going forward many different chains and this will help us essentially defining um, like each chain and the correct chain of one sidechain, the correct status or state of a chain of a sidechain with just a single hash. Um, the next one um, is that we are introducing token standards. Um, we want these common standards uh, on, in our ecosystem so that developers uh, don't reinvent the wheel. Mm. And for the beginning we are defining two standards, regular fungible tokens and non-fungible token standards so that whoever wants to create a normal token or an NFT uh, does it with our modules, does it according to our standard um, so that we can make sure that interoperability works for these token kinds or types. And that's all in that objective. Um, the fifth one being an update to the LISC BFT consensus algorithm um, where we add some new features to, the, uh, our, to, uh, to our BFT consensus algorithm. Uh, for example, that validators now can have a different weight um, giving some of them maybe a higher importance in finalizing the, the chain, which is the essential goal of the BFT consensus algorithm to create somewhat of a cementation or finalization of a block and with it of the transactions included in that block. Because if you're sending a, a transaction from one chain to another, you want to make sure that it's finalized um, on, on the chain you're sending it from 
so that not a, a fork can occur afterwards and you're essentially losing your, your coins or access to your coins um, on one of the chains but then send it already to another chain and that would mean that the state is wrong it's incorrect because on the one chain you never own them while you send it already to the other chain so this finalization is very important um, and yeah it comes through the list bfd consensus algorithm and this will be updated with some new features um, then small one uh, is that our block headers need to be updated through the various uh, new protocol changes and improvements we're introducing uh, in that release and the seventh objective is very interesting i think uh, it's the introduction of a new consensus algorithm uh, namely proof of authority um, which I think will be a very interesting consensus algorithm for bootstrapping your blockchain application uh, and the initial periods um, as well as it will be a very good consensus algorithm for enterprises and businesses uh, which don't require um, full decentralization of their blockchain. Um, we're already seeing one example in the industry which is CDFI, centralized uh, centralized decentralized finance which essentially combines you could argue the benefits of centralization with the benefits of decentralization or in general of blockchain technology so that you have your tokens that you can send them around that you can prove that you own them and so on but everything uh, more centralized so it's more efficient and you have higher throughput um, it's however currently more like a compromise to be made but some enterprises and corporations definitely will want to use such a consensus algorithm um, over um, what we already have available delegate proof of stake um, and the last one is an enhancement in our signature scheme um, which essentially will involve um, like um, a new one where uh, the signatures uh, like can become uh, smaller um, like the signatures of um, the cross-chain update transactions because these require um, the inclusion of the majority of validators of the side chain or the main chain where this uh, cross-chain uh, update transaction is being posted to make sure that everything is valid um, and well in the case of depots that can be like 50 plus 70 plus signatures as there are so many validators so we need to find a way to um, yeah, decrease the size or essentially make it possible to only have one signature uh, which verifies that um, and that comes here into play I think also um, it comes into play with the third objective I was talking about to define state model and state root um, they're both playing into that direction so essentially, um, just a very high level overview was given about our LISC interoperability solution. And on the event end of May, 21st, 22nd, um, we're going to reveal all the details um, about our solution. Um, up to the event, we are, however, already publishing some lips, which will um, contain supporting uh, research materials about interoperability but which are not necessarily um, like required or part of the core interoperability solution that's why we're going to publish them on the forum and then shortly after on our github repository before the event already those will be five um, at the current time at least um, with the remaining lips uh, which should be then 14 to be revealed at list.js 2021 so make sure to register for the event it's going to be really good and so packed with like so interesting information um, so register for the event and see you then at list.js